The year is 1998. After coming off of a legendary yet controversial win against Big George Foreman in the final fight of his career, the Canon Shannon Briggs is looking for a true title shot. After beating a great, it seems there's nowhere to go but up, and after scoping out the competition, an agreement is made for him to fight none other than the WBC heavyweight champion Lennox Lewis, who many regard as one of the greatest fighters of all time. Does the Canon have what it takes to beat Lennox and win the WBC, or is he just another piece of meat for the lion to devour? Welcome back to Boxing After Dark, where today we're going to be looking at a fight that shows a prime version of Lennox Lewis, arguably one of the greatest heavyweights of all time, against Shannon Briggs, argued to be one of the greatest punchers of the modern era of boxing. Let's get into it. When it comes to pre-fights, not many can match the raw energy and testosterone generated by the great Shannon Briggs. Let's go champ! Let's go champ! Lennox being more of a confident and slick heavyweight was the perfect target for a man like Shannon Briggs. And whilst many believed Shannon to not have much more than a puncher's chance, you can never rule a man like him out. As previously mentioned, Briggs had just defeated George Foreman, and although many were unimpressed due to just how old George was at the time of defeat, that doesn't show on the record, and no matter what age Foreman was, he was still a threat. Lennox, on the other hand, was at a time in his career where it seemed like he could beat anyone. The Lion and Evander Holyfield were the two dungeon masters of the heavyweight division, and the keys to the titles laid with them. Many and more would attempt to win, but most perished foolishly by the end of the twelfth round. Whilst Briggs didn't have the pure chaoticness in the boxing community back in 1998 that he has now, he did have his scare factor from the beginning. With such a high percentage of knockouts, he was never someone taken lightly, and his confidence against Lewis during the pre-fight was something to be admired. Whilst many other more famous and more respected boxers quivered the moment the bell rang against Lennox, or even seemingly when the fight was announced, Briggs stayed sure of himself the whole time. We all know Lennox was suave, and this fight amplified that idea tenfold, from going out on his boat relaxing in the sunshine after the announcement of the fight, to his coolness in interviews, to his steady, slow ring walk, his confidence oozed even more so than the cannons leading up to the fight. The build-up, although surprisingly tame in trash talk, still had some strange talking points. During the final weeks towards the fight, Shannon Briggs had done zero training, leading many to theorise that he'd injured himself but was too stubborn, or brave, depending on how you see it, to back out of the fight. You haven't been having any treatment no. at all because nobody's seen you hit a punch bag this week. People have been wondering. I'm saving it all for Lennox Lewis head Saturday night, so I'm just saving all my strength and all my energy for that. The fight finally came on March 28th of 1998. Many were excited to see both fighters in the ring together, one being a menace with a mouth but the power and physique to back it up, and the other a champion with the heart of a lion, and a style that's the equivalent of Pig Latin written in cursive, powerful and admirable, whilst also beautiful to the eye. The fight begins, and unsurprisingly it's manic from round one. Two sculpted physiques, two big heavyweights, Lewis comes out attacking, lands a right, so far not firing, now he fires a right hand. Fireworks early as Shannon Briggs tries to give as good as he gets against big punting Lennox Lewis. Deeper set of your jabs against Shannon Briggs. Is his head just too still? Well, excellent jab, but he's got to establish his jab a lot earlier than he's doing. First 10 seconds, Briggs firing back more aggressively than he did early on against Foreman. Briggs' trainer, Carlos Alberne, told us that he felt as though Shannon would be fine as long as he moved in the ring here on the ropes. Right hand over the top by Lewis, more of a pawing effort. This is the most action that anybody's mounted against Lewis since Ray Mercer in 96, and there Briggs almost knocks the champion down. Shannon Briggs believing that he has hurt Lewis on the attack. And Lewis is wobbling as Briggs chases him across the ring, where McCall revisited as Briggs wobbled Lewis. Lewis's iconically precise punches are hitting hard from the get-go with some clean jabs to the face of Briggs. And just like that, Briggs lands a huge left hand, crashing Lewis against the ropes. Briggs storms around the ring, 
throwing barrages of heavy hooks and uppercuts, but Lewis manages to survive until the bell rings. Yeah, the earlier left hook didn't look that powerful, but apparently it stung Lewis. What a confidence builder that round had to be for Shannon Briggs. The slugger to knock him out rather than setting his knockouts up. You get this guy look. Well, you train all week. They stand along the ropes. Uppercut just missed for Lewis inside. Good right hand over the top. He said it didn't hurt, but it did hurt. Briggs. Side seat to Briggs supporters. Good left hook by Briggs. Hard right hand over the top by Briggs. And Lennox Lewis, he's an old war fight plan, and Briggs has taken advantage in the first two rounds. And now here comes Lewis with precise punches up the middle. Right hand over the top. Round, round two begins, and Briggs lands another bazooka of a left hand. It looks like Lewis can't seem to get away from Briggs' missile punches, but luckily for Lewis, things begin to slow down. And Briggs looks like anything but a stiff. Hard right hand by Lewis. Can't see Lewis's right hand over the top as he tries to keep the two of them from leaning all over each other and re recover from the, the effects of a whole lot of energy shaking his head good mean right hand by lennox lewis yeah, but give briggs some credit he's taking some very good right hands Lewis standing back whenever he wants he throws his right hand the time he comes back with a left hard right hand to the body by lewis round three approaches and the classically composed lennox lewis of old returns loosening up and landing some quick, clean jabs to the face of Shannon Briggs. Round four begins. Harold Letterman, how'd you score the first That was a left hook. <laughs> yep, two to the one. Better hurry. Briggs has wobbled. Trains and training camp for right hands. Finish. Every tick goes by is a tick in Shannon Briggs' favor. Yeah, but that wasn't in Shannon Briggs' favor. <laughs> That was more than a tick. That was a top. <laughs> trying to show the stiff upper lip, and Lewis trying to be patient. He's landing the right hand at will. Cappuccino is not going to allow him to keep landing the right hand at will. Yeah. Defending himself, but he's not holding on. Surprises Lewis with the left. Lewis with the leaping Ooh, left hand. Right hand. There's another right and an uppercut. Showing a lot of courage. When you're not throwing punches, you gotta cover up. Stop play games. Left there, uppercut man. by Briggs. And gather himself. Hard left hand by Briggs. Lewis is hurt. And he comes back with his own left hook. And another right hand. That he's all right. Well, listen, this guy is trying to prove to the world that he's not a fluke. No three knockdown rule in effect. But two knockdowns in the round. Lewis catches Briggs, Briggs catches Lewis back, but Lewis catches Briggs again. Round five comes around and Briggs has little more than a puncher's chance. He slowly moves around the ring to regain energy. When Briggs is making a mistake, you don't want to follow a puncher around. Make the puncher follow you around. Every kick goes by, something can happen for Briggs. Another right cross, another left hook. Lewis landing flush with too many power punches. Just too much punishment. Lewis almost ignoring Briggs' offense at this point. Now when you have an opponent like Briggs. And that will be it. Shannon Briggs will not get up from that. Well, he proves me wrong. Proves me wrong. And Lewis has just hit him with too many right hands, George. Yeah. Bravery. Bravery for which Briggs is going to pay. Well, if you're in New York tonight, you can be proud, you know. This guy is showing, hey, I'm just not a... So he slipped down that time. And that's all. Yeah. Good enough. Good enough. With just over a minute left on the clock, Briggs goes down for the final time as the referee refuses to let Shannon take more unnecessary punishment. Briggs looks upset and angry, but it's clear the right decision was made. After the fight, Lewis was respectful of Briggs' speed, but also downplays himself for the fight claiming he only put in 80% of his heart into his performance. But whether that was true or not, it was undeniable that for a brief moment in round one, it looked like the WBC title was about to find a new home. Briggs in the post-fight stayed extremely humble and respectful, proclaiming that although tonight wasn't his best night, Lewis is a great champion and he lost fair and square. But um, no excuses, you know, he, he won the fight. 
good champion. Um, I could have been better tonight. A lot of personal problems. I don't want to sound like a crybaby or anything, but, you know, again, I wasn't at my best. No excuses. He's, he's a better man. He won tonight. Briggs didn't let the loss demoralize him and continued to fight for many more years, eventually retiring with a record of 60-6, and six, with undoubtedly one of the most recognizable faces, voices, and personalities in the sport to this day. Interestingly, years later, Lennox would go on to say that Briggs was not only the hardest puncher he'd ever faced, but the fastest. So even if Shannon Briggs lost the fight, he left an impression on one of the greatest heavyweights of all time on the night, and that impression clearly never left. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to see more, feel free to leave a like. Don't be afraid to comment and make sure to subscribe. This has been a Boxing After Dark production. Thank you for watching.